the Brits don't really care who's in power in the US. They're competing with the other outlets in London. It's the most intense competitive media environment in the world. And so political ideologies fall by the wayside. It's secondary at best. And I think if we had a little more of that in the US, you wouldn't see The Guardian breaking the Snowden story and making The Washington Post you know, look a little silly for sitting on it for a while. Um, we need more, more competitive media. So I think it's a good thing that the British media are kind of swooping in, you know, call it a second British invasion if you want, and making everybody a little uncomfortable. Uh, you know, my job here is to break news for the Daily Mail and for Mail Online. I'm the U.S. political editor now, and I'm trying to move the ball forward. And I really don't care who's in power. I, you know what? I, I may have my own political leanings, my own political feelings, but my job is to break news, drive traffic, you know, improve the footprint of the organization. And you do that by competing. You do that by getting there first and getting it right. And politics are secondary, and they should be. It sounds like you're talking about not necessarily bias in the media, which is something that I think, especially on the right side of, of political commentary, you hear a lot about media bias. But it sounds like that's not really what you're describing. It seems like more of a, of a bias towards power, maybe? I don't want to use your own words, you know what, but how you know are you what describing it? Is? It's a bias in Washington toward popularity. Um, the, the D.C. press corps, especially at the White House, is a, <laughs> you know, they're pack animals. Um, everybody wants to be invited to the right cocktail parties. Everybody wants to be in the right social circles, get to rub elbows with the right people and the right powerful people. And you don't get those <laughs> invitations by being the one um, guy, to, the only guy to go over the cliff and ask the hard questions in the press room when nobody else is doing it. The James Rosen and the AP tapping scandals, you know, from the DOJ have been like water breaking through a dam. A lot of reporters simultaneously were offended. And as a pack, they've started to ask harder questions in a way that no single one of them would have attempted because you don't want to be the one guy not invited to the cool kids table. There's a lot of that going on. It's sad, but that's what it is. But the foreign outlets look at it and they scratch their heads and they say, oh, shut up. You know, just go and do your job. And so they don't really pay attention, but that's when they get put in the fourth row of the press room and they don't get to ask questions either. So um, there's a lot of that. It's, it's a big popularity contest. And the smart ones are starting to gravitate toward the model of the foreign press where we're going to do our jobs. I don't care who the president is. We're going to be the adversaries we're supposed to be. And at the end of the day, we're going to judge our success based on whether or not we shine a light on something, whether or not our advertisers got their dollars worth, whether or not our readers got smarter. The rest of it, far less important. And it's 